So our uh, next speaker up is uh, Ken Kenya. He is from Google, and he's going to talk about WebDriver for Chrome. And so with that, right. have fun. Thank you. All right. So uh, thanks, Tony. So to start off, my name is Ken. Uh, just a little bit of background. I work on the Google Chrome testing team, particularly on the just the browser side. So a little bit of background about how kind of Chrome testing is broken up. Just real quick, there's the, the browser team, then there's kind of the mobile team, and then there's the OS team. So I'm primarily on the browser side. OK, so basically, I'm going to be talking today about a tool uh, that we have supported uh, within the Chrome team, which is called Chrome Driver, or also called WebDriver for Chrome. So you can see up here, it's a very simple problem. Many of you are probably familiar with it, maybe even familiar with the tool. So we have, in Chrome, just Chrome, over 300 million active users. And that's pretty old, old data, but that's at least, that still holds true, hopefully. <laughs> but so we have ex ever-expanding amount of platforms. Um, so of course, we just started with Chrome, with Chrome for beta on Windows 2008, expanded to other desktops, now Mac, Linux, and then uh, more recently, Chrome OS, branched out into Chrome OS, and then now mobile, Chrome for Android, and Chrome for iOS. So the question, the basic question is, as a web app developer, how can we or how can I go about automatically verifying that the critical functionality of my app works across all these different platforms? So this is a pretty broad question that you could look at just in browsers in general. But today, this talk, I'm just going to focus just on Chrome. So within Chrome, how can I verify my functionality, the critical functionality that my app provides across all these different platforms automatically? And so. Hopefully, during your development process, you've engaged in good unit testing. Uh, and maybe if you're a really diligent tester, you've also done some sort of uh, isolated component testing. But at the very end of the day, you want to be able to have some, some guarantee that what the end user sees um, and what you go through as an end user is actually correct. Um, and the, basically, the, the solution to this problem is Chrome Driver. So, a little bit of background. Chrome driver uh, follows the W3C web driver uh, working draft that uh, some of the Mozilla guys talked about a little bit earlier on uh, this morning. So because of that, it's interoperable with all the open source uh, web driver client libraries, whether it's Java or Python or Ruby, uh, whatever uh, whatever fits your boat. Um, it is open source. Chrome driver is open source and maintained by uh, the members of the Chromium project. And Chromium. For those of you who aren't familiar, it's just the project that supports Google Chrome and other Chromium-based browsers. So for the rest of this talk, I'm just going to describe a couple things. Number one, how can you uh, use Chrome Driver? What does it actually do? Uh, number two, what, um, how, what kind of work we have done to enable Chrome Driver to work not just on desktop, but also the other Chrome platforms, specifically uh, Android in this talk. And then uh, hopefully I'll give you a little bit of deeper dive about how exactly Chrome Driver works, uh, just for you guys who are curious and maybe who want to adopt kind of similar technologies underneath, depending on what your frameworks you are using. So to start, WebDriver. Um, so that, that previous slide doesn't really make a whole, lot, a whole lot of sense if you don't know what WebDriver is. So WebDriver is a cross-browser automation API, which was primarily for website testing. That's what it historically was for. Um, now, there's become more use cases, wider audiences using WebDriver. But that was at least one of the main original, and still is the original, the main intention for WebDriver, the WebDriver API. So it's cross-browser. So this API covers, I listed a couple things there. We have uh, browser control, being able to user, simulate the user input, whether it's mouse, uh, mouse or typing, uh, keyboard, et cetera. And also, another category I just put together is web stuff, random web kind of stuff like being able to find elements on a page, evaluate script, evaluate JavaScript, uh, manipulate local storage cookies. So that's basically WebDriver. So WebDriver is cross-browser automation API. And Chrome Driver is essentially the implementation of that protocol for Chrome. Not, not a very difficult concept. But so just to get you a little bit familiar with those of you who perhaps haven't seen a lot of WebDriver stuff before, um, here's a sample test written in Python using the open source uh, Python WebDriver library. That first statement, we're just creating uh, an instance of Chrome Driver. Um, we're passing in the path to our Chrome Driver binary executable. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Second statement is simply navigating to our test page, in this case, which is Google. Uh, then we're finding an element on that page with the name Q. 
we're saving a reference to that element inside this variable search box. We send some keys, which is just typing, we type Chrome driver. We submit that form. Uh, and at this time, WebDriver will then wait if there's any navigation that's occurring because of that typing or because of the, the form submission. And then we actually do the one actual test part of our test, which is we assert that Chrome driver is in the title of the page that we have navigated to. And lastly, of course, we just quit. So that's a simple, really simple test that hopefully gives you, gives you a feel for what you can do with the API. So now, uh, how can you go about, how can we go about using Chrome driver? So an important thing here is that uh, Chrome driver actually for desktop, for Windows, Mac, and Linux has been around for quite some time, uh, over a year. Um, you can easily find that on our public Chrome driver uh, site, code.google.com slash p slash Chrome driver. Of course, you can just search for it. Um, but recently, in the past couple months, a lot of uh, several members of the Chromium team uh, from Android, also from the browser side, have been working on a new version of Chrome driver, which we just call Chrome driver 2. And uh, <laughs> pretty creative. But uh, <laughs> so basically, this is a re-architecture of Chrome driver to uh, fit to be able to span, like I was talking about at the beginning, multiple more Chrome platforms. Because we want our testers to be able to run these tests against as many Chrome platforms as possible. So with this re-architecture, we're able to support not only desktop, as I have listed at top, but also Android. And so yeah, I'm happy to, to announce that we do have alpha support for uh, Chrome on Android, Chrome driver on Android testing uh, with Chrome on Android. And you can get kind of a get hold of that on our website. I posted a couple links here that you can you can look at. Uh, a couple caveats with the Android Alpha: uh, you do need currently you do need a, a special configuration. Um, you do need a Mac or Linux host connected via USB to your actual Android device. Um, but essentially, and there's also a couple other things like you need Chrome 27. A couple more details that you can see on the site. Uh, and basically, though, really what you need to do is specify the Android package capability when you start your, your session. And for Chrome OS and for iOS, unfortunately, if you want to use that, you just need to be patient or want to uh, contribute. <laughs> but so uh, you have to wait for that. So how does it, how does it work? Uh, a little bit background on how it works. So there's mainly three components. On the left here, I have the WebDriver client, um, which is essentially your test. Doesn't have to be a test. Maybe you're writing something else. Uh, which uses the WebDriver library, um, which is available in all those different flavors, different languages that I was talking about earlier. That communicates, these are all processes, at least for Chrome. So that's one process, your WebDriver client process. And that talks to Chrome Driver, which is the tool that we're talking about in this talk, which is functions as the WebDriver server. And that, of course, communicates over the, the standard WebDriver protocol that we've been talking about today. And Chrome driver talks to Chrome, controls Chrome via, right now, two, two main ways, dev tools and extensions. And so this is uh, Chrome driver 2. The old Chrome driver used a, a different Chrome automation API, which was desktop only. But so now we're just going to talk about Chrome driver 2. So a little bit about dev tools and extensions for the, those guys who perhaps haven't heard a whole lot about it. So dev tools is the same thing. You can see easily in Chrome by just right clicking the page going left-clicking inspect element, you'll see that kind of debugger view, kind of like uh, that comes up usually at the bottom of the page. And you'll see uh, the DOM tree. You'll be able to see performance metrics. You'll be able to see, uh, you can trace and see the network activity, what's taking so, what resources are taking, how long to load, and kind of, kind of that breakdown. So that's essentially that debugger kind of interface is using basically dev tools underneath. Dev tools, of course, is short for developer tools. Um, so we're using that, and the, the main benefit behind using that is, number one, it's pretty low level. It used to be mostly implemented in WebKit, which is now Blink, uh, or been split into Blink. Um, but it's supported on all the platforms that Chrome runs on, except for iOS currently. Um, you can do, on iOS 6 Plus, you can do dev tools, um, but it's only officially supported through uh, Safari on OS X, so we can't actually access that right now with Chrome driver on iOS. Uh, the second main tool that we use, or API that we use to automate Chrome, is the extensions API that Chrome comes supported with. So, of course, many of you guys are familiar with extensions, the concept of extensions, but they initially were meant to, extensions were meant to modify or enhance 
functionality of the browser. And we've taken that and we've just, of course, plugged in our own custom extension and be able to control the browser through some of the APIs that are provided there. But however, since extensions are only desktop only, we've relied mostly on developer tools for most of the stuff that we care about. So here's a, just a, a nice diagram for you guys who are interested in kind of what it overall the implementation really looks like. So there's three pieces here. There's the Chrome driver server, and there's the browser, Chrome's multi-process browser. So you have that browser process, and you have those two render processes. Um, you can see commands will come in through the HTTP server um, from our WebDriver client. They'll be delegated to a particular session. So perhaps you might have multiple uh, WebDriver clients talking to this one Chrome driver server. So you might have multiple sessions. And these sessions control usually control their own uh, instance of the browser. In this case, it might be a little bit misleading, but you can see there's uh, each session has aligned to this DevTools server. Usually those are separate browsers. But the session will talk to the DevTools server, which then delegates down to particular renderers uh, through the DevTools agent. And hopefully your web app that you're trying to test is running in one of those renderers. And in another one of those renderers, hopefully we have the Chrome driver extension running to be able to do some of the extra stuff we need to do to automate the browser on desktop. So what's kind of some of the future stuff that we're considering for this tool? Um, some plans that we, we hope to uh, start on. So in general, since we have switched to developer tools for the basis of controlling Chrome, that gives us a lot of uh, more, since a little bit lower level than our old API, it gives us a lot of uh, really cool features like being able to profile you know, what in JavaScript on your page is taking up so much memory, what kind of memory leaks possibly do you have, um, some interesting performance measurement stuff, uh, access to like the logs of the JavaScript con console. Um, talking more specifically about Android, uh, we hope to, uh, we're considering supporting the upcoming uh, Chrome-backed WebView. So right now, WebView is, of course, kind of an Android concept. Um, when when uh, we are considering, though, supporting when Chrome become, when actually Chrome supports or powers that WebView to be able to integrate with that and actually test that. Uh, we are considering also running the driver on the device instead of that requiring that host configuration I was talking about earlier. Uh, for iOS, uh, it's a little bit tricky, as I mentioned because of the limitations just in the UI web view, how we're using the UI web view uh, uh, in Chrome for iOS. And we're still pretty in early stages of development and kind of planning. So not a whole lot to say there, unfortunately. So that's basically uh, the end of what I wanted to talk about. So if you're interested in, in using Chrome Drive as a tool, uh, we have uh, ways that you can uh, file bugs. I have that link up there. Also, there's a user forum, public user forum. And of course, since it's all open source, uh, we'd love to have third party patches, contributions, uh, you name it. But that concludes my talk. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you, Ken. Um, you've come a long way since writing games based on the Powerpuff Girls. So, nice <laughs> job. <laughs> That's what, that's what happens when they tell me these little tidbits. So, um, <clears throat> it looks like we maybe have time for one question. Um, if there's not a live question, okay, um, let's go ahead and take one live question, and then we're probably going to just move on to the next talk. So please. Uh, for some time, Firefox has been able to control the um, uh, I lost the word the profile. I think that's uh, uh, Chrome's handling of profile now is uh, has parity with Firefox's is, and I don't think it's part of WebDriver specification. Is that something that you're talking to Mozilla about and continue will continue to support is manipulating profiles in Chrome? Right. Uh, so yeah. So to start off, we are not currently talking with Mozilla about that, <laughs> but. Uh, we are interested in uh, maybe not supporting profiles per se, but there's a distinction in Chrome, I'm not sure about the other browsers, between your user data directory and also your profile. So for Chrome driver, we do in the tool allow you to specify a custom user data directory which maybe has several profiles already set up uh, to be able to do stuff like that. But we don't have any way like now to dynamically through the WebDriver API create new profiles or edit profiles or anything like that. But yeah. Great. Thank you, Ken. Great. Thanks.